All right, we're here uh, at uh, Beyond Broke in Venice Beach, and um, uh, this is Reviewer TV, and you're the director. Uh, could you introduce yourself to our um, viewers? Yes, my name is Richard Modiano. I'm the executive director of Beyond Baroque Foundation, also known as Beyond Baroque Literary Arts Center. Here in Venice, 681 Venice Boulevard, about a quarter of a mile from the beach. Right in the heart of uh, hipster uh, Venice, Venice Beach, probably one of the, mm -hmm. the, the ground zeros of the, the uh, art and literary hip hipster, hi hippie culture. As it uh, still exists. Counterculture in general. Counterculture in general, that's yeah. right. Yeah, going back to uh, the post World War II period, Venice was known as the slum by the sea. And it was full of low rent housing, which of course attracts struggling artists. Oh, yeah. So you had a whole bunch of people who were moving into Venice right after World War II. And also, it was the other interesting thing, it was multiracial then. So there were black, white, Latino, and Asian all living in Venice at that time because it was a cheap place to live. And, of course, the white layer were mostly artists who, of course, relative to the population of that era, were not particularly prejudiced against living right next door to a black guy or a Mexican family or a Japanese-American family. But um, in the 1950s, Venice became home to the Venice Beats. Um, the local Venice Beats were people such as uh, Stuart Perkoff, Frank Rios, um, uh, let's see, what was his name? Alexander Trochi, um, who was from the UK but came out to Venice when he heard about it. Uh, uh, um, Lawrence Lipton wrote a book called The Holy Barbarians which, which documents the Venice Beats scene as it existed back then um, they founded uh, the Café uh, uh, Expresso as it was called not Espresso but Expresso as a way, as a play on expressing yourself so there was a whole beat era that, that, that was established here in Venice um, back in the 50's and it drew the more well-known beats here as well, Allen Ginsberg and Jack Kerouac visited Gregory Corso, um, Lenore Kendall, and several others. In 1968, uh, a man by the name of George Drury Smith, who was a high school teacher, had a print shop located on West Washington Boulevard known as Abbott Kinney. And he specifically came to Venice for the beat scene, but he missed it. He arrived at sort of the midpoint of the hippie scene in Venice which was just as good for him. But there was no artistic production on, on the part of the hippie scene that was going on in Venice at that time. So he founded a magazine called Beyond Baroque, which he published out of his print shop. And then in 1969, on Friday nights, after hours in his storefront, he began holding poetry readings. And then later that same year, the late Joseph Hansen and John Harris started the free Wednesday night poetry workshop which has been going on continuously from that first Wednesday night down to just last Wednesday night. And Beyond Baroque moved to this building in 1979. The building that we are in was the old Venice City Hall. Um, Venice was an independent city until the mid-1930s when it became part of Los Angeles. And the area where we are at was its civic center. There's a police station, which is now the home of Spark, the Social Public Art Resource Center, and there's still a functioning fire station. And if you're interested in seeing what old Venice looked like in the late 50s, uh, check out Orson Welles' movie Touch of Evil, which was filmed on location here. And then in 1961, uh, or pardon me, 63, Dennis Hopper was in a movie where you can see Beyond Baroque and Spark. Uh, this movie is called Night Tide, and it was a sort of semi-underground film. And I probably it was what attracted Hopper to Venice, because he eventually moved to Venice and lived right down the street from us where we are now. So once Beyond Baroque moved here in the decade of 1979 to roughly 1989, a whole new crew of people came through it, including people such as Exine Cervenka and John Doe, who met in the Wednesday night workshop and formed the band X as a result of that meeting. Uh, the Knitters, at, which was the sort of the, the precursor of X, performed in our theater downstairs, and of course Dave Alvin was part of that. Um, also during that same decade, Viggo Mortensen was in the workshop. Um, Tom Waits, better known as a singer-songwriter, was in the workshop. 
and uh, Mike Kelly was also in the workshop. Mike Kelly, who passed away at the beginning of 2012, was an internationally famous visual artist. He came out from Detroit. He actually got his start designing leaflets and posters for garage punk bands. And from there, he built his career as an internationally well-known artist. And he had a major retrospective at uh, the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, which came to the Geffen Contemporary last year. And he remained a supporter of Beyond Baroque until his death, and even after, which uh, with the foundation of the Mike Kelly uh, Foundation for the Arts, which gives grants to small non well, small arts nonprofits like Beyond Baroque and individual artists. So during that particular period, we had a connection to the Los Angeles punk scene and other avant-garde movements. And before that, interestingly enough, we have a picture of Jim Morrison standing in front of Beyond Baroque when it was still a city building. When the city of Los Angeles took over uh, the city of Venice, they used the building that we are in now, the, the old city hall, as a government building. So Jim is seen in a photograph protesting some sort of action that they were doing on the boardwalk. I think the police put in a curfew and he came and picketed the outpost of the city hall, which was this building. So we got a picture of Jim standing in front of uh, what was then, what was before Beyond Baroque, but he was here too. And in fact, uh, we have a sort of, the, the surviving members of the Doors have all appeared at Beyond Baroque at one time or another, uh, sometimes all together. So you, there was sort of been like informal reunions of the doors here over the years. And now today, we're in 2015, we're still going strong. Uh, we are actually having uh, the two surviving members of the doors back later this year to do a musical performance. Uh, we're having, uh, we're part of the National Beat Poetry Festival, which celebrates the history of the beats in about 12 cities throughout the U.S., and Beyond Baroque is handling the Los Angeles part of that, and we're going to focus on the Venice Beats. So, um, what else can I tell you about it? I mean, it's, uh, we, do a, we do a bunch of things here, including poetry reading, spoken word, music shows, art shows, free workshops, community use, free community use. We have a community garden that was planted in the front of the building by Kiss the Ground, a nonprofit that specializes in organic agriculture. And, um, yeah, we have a whole bunch of stuff that still happens here. This is all uh, right in this uh, three-story, she was saying it was a clapboard building yep. built in, and you, you were saying it was 1906? 1906. It was built, and it was built as the Venice City, Beach Hall. city Hall when That's it was right. a city. And uh, it was gifted to the foundation by the city? or the sit, We rent it from the city. You rent it, so it's still owned by the city. And it's still under the city. It's but you've got, like, a long lease, good lease or something. Lease. Yeah. yeah. Um, and all of the history, all those personalities you were mentioning, they all came through those doors downstairs, and they all performed here. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, wow. And then the, the post piece, like uh, B Bukowski, yep. kind of got a start in this town, and mm -hmm. he, was, he was right in this area, very close by. He went by. to the Wednesday night workshop. His common-law wife, Frances Dean Smith, was a member of the Beyond Baroque Wednesday night workshop. Hmm. He came and visited it once, and he said, enough, stop, spare me. Really? He was no. He was. He didn't like it. He he didn't he didn't think poetry could be learned in a workshop. But he was. Oh. He was a contrarian. I mean, he gave. He believed poetry. in it, but he just didn't want to be a part of this well, educational he gave, scene. He, he didn't want to be. He didn't want to be in any workshops. He was a solitary guy, and even though he gave poetry readings, he reluctantly yeah. did that. I mean, his famous saying was, "Shakespeare never had to do this." Ah. Uh, huh. Why, why would he do it then? I mean, well, you know, there was people, a de people wanted to demand. hear Bukowski, and there was a way of selling his books. And his publisher said, Buke, you've got to get out there and show mm. the people your face. They want to know about you. And he said, all right, if you say so. Well, today in the uh, area, era of the Internet, who would you say the uh, up-and-coming personalities and talents are in poetry, literature, uh, spoken word, or whatnot? Oh, that's hard to say. I mean, I could get in trouble if I start naming leaving names, someone out, yeah. uh, leaving people out, but... Um, off the top of your head. Off, well, there's right a, now. Brendan Constantine is a wonderful poet who he's been around a few years and he's read off at Beyond Baroque. He did some volunteer work here and he's going to be teaching a workshop here. So he's a wonderful poet, terrific poet. Uh, Amanda Gorman, who is Los Angeles's first student poet laureate, was part of Beyond Baroque's Young Poets Development Program uh, two years ago, and her first publication was published by Beyond Baroque. So. 
Uh, those are two up and coming people. I mean, Good. she's 17 years old, and Brendan is late 30s. He's been on the scene for a while, but uh, I, if you ask me to pick two wonderful Los Angeles poets, I'd pick them. And are the um, events free or for donation or admission? Uh, the workshops are free. All the writing workshops are free. Uh, the programs are, are, you have to pay admission for, for, for that. If you're a member, you can come to them for free. And if you, be, you do become a member, we send you our calendar four times a year, and we give you a premium courtesy of Percival Press, which is Viggo Mortensen's imprint, by the way, and he lets us give away these wonderfully produced books that uh, his imprint puts out, which are all kinds of books, photography, poetry, art books, uh, books about uh, political issues. Yeah, the bookstore downstairs is uh, really nice. There's a lot of uh, really good small press, kind of, um, some are, look like they're handmade, sort of yeah, very, yeah. I mean, if somebody's a book collector yeah. and a book fetishist, it's kind of like a nirvana down there for them. <laughs> um, well, thank you for your time. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, if people want to sign up on the website, can they go to your website? What is yes, the website they can, again? Yes, uh, org. Beyondbroke.org. All one word, no dashes or anything. Yeah. Great. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. The city council chambers and the courtroom. The room that we're going to? Yeah. Okay. And everybody has performed there to say that it has. You guys have a blocked off stairway there. Yeah, that's in the room. They, they, um, they subdivided the building at uh -huh. a certain point. Uh, Hi, guys. Hello. Okay, this is the room where uh, Ginsburg and everybody would... Yes, at this, and, uh, at this podium, Alan Ginsburg performed... This very podium? Yes, Patti mm -hmm. Smith. Really? Uh, the punk rock queen? Mortensen, no kidding. Uh, taken away when the band was playing, Dave Alvin and uh, Exine and John Doe. And so X got there to start playing here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was this the first place they ever played? I think it is. Not even house party or anything? Possibly, but it, 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 if not the first place, it's one of the first places. Interesting, wow. You guys haven't even changed the podium, huh? Nope. Huh. Thanks. A little bit of a hipster history here in Los Angeles, folks, on Reviewer TV.